What's good, Steeler Nation? My name is Jack Sperry, and this is Steelers Talk. Thanks for spending part of your Sunday with us today. We're going to be talking about injury news for both the Steelers and the Colts today before their Monday night matchup tomorrow night. But before we get into all the action in the news today, I'm going to ask you to go down and subscribe to the channel right now. Right now, we are we're trailing Giants now in total subs, guys, and we all know that Steeler Nation this fan base is way better than the New York Giants fan base. We are so much further ahead than these guys, these jokers. We need to get ahead of these guys, and we need to catch up. So if you're new here, you're looking for daily, free uh, Steelers news and rumors content for 365 days out of the year, consider subscribing and helping us catch up to Giants now. All right, now let's get into the injury news. And the big one of the day is that Jalen Warren is out. He will not be playing uh, tomorrow night against the Colts. This is something that we've been kind of foreseeing here over the week. He's been out of practice. Uh, it wasn't looking good for him to play, and now it is official. He will not be in the lineup, and it will be Anthony McFarland who will be the running back too, and he will be backing up Najee Harris. But actually, but you know, Najee's probably going to get most of the action. McFarland might get a couple snaps here and there, but expect a heavy workload from Najee Harris against the Colts and that really tough. Uh, run defense. Uh, but before we get into the rest of the injury news today, let's have a word from our sponsor at Established Titles. Established Titles is a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts. It is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds or lords and ladies in English. Title packs give you at least one square foot of dedicated land with a unique plot number on a private estate in Edelson, Scotland. You're watching a video of the estate right now and an official certificate with a crest. They plant a tree with every order and work with global charities such as One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to support global reforestation efforts. You could officially include the title Lord or Lady on your credit cards, plane tickets, dating profiles, and more, and it makes a great last minute gift uh, for the House of the Dragon fan in your family. The first 200 people that purchase a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot. I'm Lord Jack Sperry. I have a plot of land in Edelson, Scotland, and we have a, we have a, a, a set amount of land that we're going to build Steeler Nation with. So if you want to be part of Steeler Nation and own a piece of that in Edelson, Scotland, go ahead and use our link, establishedtitles.com slash chat. They have some incredible holiday deals going on right now, up to 80% off their title packs. And then you can get an additional 10% off if you use promo code chat when you use our link as well. So not only if you use our link, not only will you be able to be a part of Steeler Nation in Edelson, Scotland, but you'll get an additional 10% off when you use promo code chat. So again, that's establishedtitles.com slash chat and use promo code chat to get an additional 10% off. All right, the number two biggest news of the day is that DeMarvin Leal is expected to be back this week off of his knee injury. Uh, you know, he's been out for a couple of weeks now. It's been rumored that he's going to be back, and it's looking like he's going to be back. At the time that I'm recording this video, guys, he's not, he's not officially taken off IR, but he is expected to be off IR for tomorrow's game, and he's expected to be on the field. Let's take a look at the Steelers' defensive line, and DeMarvin you know, he's kind of behind some guys right now. He, he's going to be more in more of a rotational piece. They're not going to play him too much against Indianapolis if, of course, he plays. But, I mean, Leal has been putting a bunch of stuff on his Instagram that's been that's been uh, hinting that he's going to be on the field. But Steeler coaches don't want to rush him back. They're going to they're gonna put him in as a rotational player. It's going to be mostly Ogunjobi and Loudermilk in there, along with Cam Hayward and Alualu at nose tackle. And really, I mean, I'm excited to see DeMarvin Leal back out on the field, but he shouldn't get that many snaps this week. But I'm excited to see him back. If you're excited to see him back this week, like this video uh, to welcome him back to the fold here. He's been gone for a couple of weeks. He's a very athletic, very promising young player. So if you're excited to see DeMarvin Leal back in the fold this week, go ahead and like this video right now. All right, number three here, uh, Mason Cole. The center, he is in. He was seen in a walking boot, had missed a couple days of practice this week. It's looking like he's going to be in this week, which is huge uh, because I'm looking like, it's looking like that, you know, guys, at the end of the day, the Steelers offensive line, they need as much help as they can get. I mean, let's just take a look here. I mean, very, very, I mean, you look at, especially the tackles, Dan Moore Jr. and Okorafor have been really bad this season, 62nd and 56th. 
uh, tackles according to Pro Football Focus. Really low grades. Dotson's been okay at 28th, but in Cole's 14th, which is, uh, again, okay. And James Daniels is really the only guy on the Steelers' offensive line right now that when you combine the pass blocking grade and run blocking grade, he's doing well in both. So James Daniels is probably that one rock in the offensive line that's doing a good job all around, but everybody else is certainly replaceable and not really all that great. Uh, I think the pass blocking's been better than the run blocking, that's for damn sure, but I mean, at the end of the day, this offensive line certainly needs all the help it can get, and having Cole in the lineup this week should help Kenny Pickett, at least minimally. All right, so rate the offensive line for the Pittsburgh Steelers on a scale of 1 to 10 in the comment section for me. For me, I'm going to give them a 5. Like, it's, it's definitely not great. It, I might, this might even be generous. A 5 might be generous. I mean, they're not very good in run blocking situations. The, plas, the pass blocking, uh, if, you, if you agree with the statistics and the analytics, say that they're about league average. So I don't think they're that good. They definitely need more help at tackle. I wouldn't be surprised if they take two tackles in the NFL draft next year. So let me know what you guys think of the Steelers' offensive line. Rate them on a scale of 1 to 10 in the comments section. And, and number four here, Akella Witherspoon. He's been out the last couple weeks. That trend is going to continue this week. He will be out with that hamstring injury that's kept him out of the lineup for so long, it seems, at this point. And, I, I mean, right now it's looking like Levi Wallace is probably going to be the guy at cornerback. But, you know, I think James Pierre uh, should be getting a little bit more playing time. Let's take a look at the depth chart for the Steelers' cornerbacks. Obviously, William Jackson III is still on IR. Uh, Levi Wallace has been getting... Uh, the reps of as of late with Witherspoon out of the lineup. But I think James Pierre, you know, you look at the numbers, his coverage grade has been a lot better than Levi's over the course of the season so far. So I think if Mike Tomlin uh, was smart here, he would put James Pierre as that second cornerback this week. But it, it's looking like it's probably going to be Wallace and then, of course, Mallette at nickel. But for me, I think the Steelers should be playing a lot more of that three safety package where you have Edmonds, KZ and Fitzpatrick in there all at the same time and put Fitzpatrick in that nickel role instead of Mollette because Mollette's not getting it done. We need to put as much talent as possible on the field. And I think that three safety package really, uh, really accentuates the strengths of the Steelers defense. Whereas if you have Mollette on there, he can get, he gets cooked in man coverage all the time. And it's just, it's just a huge liability for the Steelers defense. You know, you look at the Steelers' safeties right now. I mean, Fitzpatrick and Edmonds are the ones that are almost always on the field. But last week against Cincinnati, KZ spent quite a bit of time on the bench. And, you know, I think KZ's just too much of an impact player to be putting on the bench, at, at, you know, in, de in deference to Arthur Mallette. Mallette has been awful all season long. He's only had one really good game, and that was against the Saints. And KZ, I think, is a lot more talented and brings more value to the Steelers' defense than Mollette does. So I think having that three-safety package to put Mick and Fitzpatrick in that nickel role, I think that's really the best way for the Steelers to operate on defense. But I guess we'll see what the Colts do this week. And finally, guys, a bit of a surprise. Robert Spillane, not Spillane, Spillane. We forgot the E there on, on the graphic, but... Robert Spillane is questionable with a back, which is a bit of a surprise because he wasn't on the injury report, so he must have got hurt during practice or something this week. And, you know, he's questionable to go. And, you know, if it's not him, it's going to be one of the other linebackers, either Marcus Robinson or Marcus Allen or Mark Robinson. And, you know, right now you got Miles Jack and Devin Bush. Bush has actually been playing a lot better over the last couple of weeks, guys. You guys know that I've been a big critic of Devin Bush, but over the last couple of weeks on film, he's actually looked a lot better. Uh, and with Spillane hurt and possibly out, it's either going to be Mark Robinson or Marcus Allen here uh, taking up that role. So it'll be interesting to see if Spillane doesn't go, which linebacker is going to get more time there as that rotational piece, or if they'll just stick with Jack and Bush for the entire matchup. And before we say goodbye, let's go over the Colts injury report and kind of like the key question marks here heading into tomorrow's matchup. DeForest Buckner, star defensive tackle. I listed him as one of the Colts troublemakers in the preview video this week. Uh, he's questionable with ribs with a rib injury. And then he's also had some he's been dealing with some sickness this week as well. So it's he's questionable to play tomorrow night. If he's not on the field, that is a huge advantage for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then also the two top edge rushers. For the Colts are questionable to go. Quiddy Pay, uh, first round pick, questionable with an ankle. 
And then Yannick Ngakwe, questionable with a back injury. He, and he was a bit of a surprise because he got hurt in practice this week. So it, it looks like the Colts could be without their three top pass rushers in this game. And if that's the case, especially because you got Jeff Saturday as the head coach and that offense uh, struggling the way that it is, things are starting to look towards the Steelers' direction. Hopefully they can get it done tomorrow. I'm looking forward to tomorrow night. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's show. Real one, roll call. All right, guys, if you guys made it to the end of today's video, you are a real one. So identify yourselves in the comment section by typing HERE WE GO in all caps. All right, guys, that'll be it for today's video. I'll catch you guys tomorrow night after the game for my post-game reaction. And until then, until then peace, guys.